Hey everyone, this is Tlor, and today I'm going to be talking about my Commander deck for Magic the Gathering. Now, it's been 10 years since I've played Magic, and um, I am not a huge fan of it in general. I hate playing up against black, I hate using black, just creepy gross zombies is not my thing. And I used to play around a little bit with some friends, uh, and... You know, I finally went to a local game store and played in a tournament and was destroyed by people that had these expensive decks. And, you know, I don't mind losing a game, but playing up against a deck that plays a card to counter every card that I play, just, it's like I didn't even get to play. So I was frustrated and went down to a different local game store and bought every dragon they had, and that was it. I got out of Magic. I liked the dragons, I liked them for the art. Uh, this was not one of the ones that I got, but uh, oh, I'm sure one of them in here was one of the ones that I bought. Um, yeah, a lot of these are, are newer. I, I ended up adding a lot of cards here um, recently, just cheap cards to really flesh out my deck. Um, Hellkite Igniter was like a one or two dollar card, or uh, Balefire Dragon, that was probably one of the more expensive ones at like five. So I think I spent $20, bought up all the cool looking dragons that they had, and called it a day. Uh, Moonveil Dragon was another one that I got. Well, fast forward 10 years to 2020, and I've started my Meeple's Woodworking business, and Magic the Gathering is still a big thing. Well, I met someone who told me about this uh, format called Commander. And that was a lot more appealing to me, not having to buy your decks every few months, uh, not going up against these crazy expensive decks. Well, you know, I built this deck last year and have yet to actually use it. So I thought it would be fun to go through this deck before I ever actually play it and just see how ridiculously wrong I am about how good it is. So I picked for my commander, Lathless Dragon Queen, Legendary Creature Dragon Flying, whenever another non-token dragon enters the battlefield under your control, create a 5-5 red dragon creature token with flying. And uh, for one and a red, dragons you control get plus one plus zero until end of turn. So this is a fantastic commander. A 6-6 six, six, for four and red red is already good. Then you get flying and being able to create dragon tokens and all dragons getting plus one plus zero. This is great. So one of the things that we need to do is be getting dragons into the battlefield. So I can create as many of these tokens as possible. Now, uh, what are some of the best dragons to go with that? Um, something like this. Whenever a creature attacks you or a planeswalker you control, each dragon you control deals one damage to that creature. So that includes the tokens that we generate. Uh, and until end of turn, each planeswalker you control becomes a 4-4 red dragon. Hey, look, there's another dragon. So, uh, that's a pretty good one. Um, yeah, so let's see. These are all just pretty generic dragons with, with plus abilities. Um, and uh, I, I'm just going to quickly go through these to try and find the cool dragons. And then we'll come back to some of these cards. Uh, Seize Dragon was a really inexpensive dragon. Uh, destroy all walls your opponents control. I mean, I don't think a lot of people use walls. Um, if the defending player controls no walls, it deals two damage to each creature, creature without flying that player controls. So this is a great way to do damage to all their creatures uh, because it enters the battlefield, destroys their walls, and then attacks and does damage to them because they don't have walls. Uh, Skyship Stalker is uh, four mana for a three three. So it's a little bit weaker than most of the dragons, but that's kind of nice to have some low cost. Um, and being able to spend mana to get some of these extra abilities, like plus one, plus zero. Uh, first Strike and Haste really makes it a pretty flexible dragon to have in there. Uh, let's see. I'm looking for a couple of specific ones in here. So Scourge of Valkas is great with Lathless. Whenever... Scourge of Valkas or another dragon enters the battlefield under your control. It deals X damage to target creature or player where X is the number of dragons you control. 
Again, we're generating a ton of dragons. So that's an A-plus card in this deck. Uh, not to mention, um, if we look at Warstorm Surge, uh, this is another one of those. Whenever a creature enters the battlefield, it deals damage equal to its power. So we're going to be looking for a lot of enters the battlefield. Now, there's a second flavor to this deck, uh, and this kind of covers that a little bit. Um, destroy target artifact, Horde Smelter Dragon gets plus X plus zero until end of turn, where X is the artifact's converted mana cost. So that hints at it a little bit. Uh, we also have Opportunistic Dragon um, that can either target a human or an artifact, probably always going to be targeting an artifact, and gain control of it, it loses all abilities, but it's still in my possession. So I'm going to put the artifact ones up here. You'll notice there are quite a few artifacts in the deck. Here's a cheap dragon that I can bring in that'll then generate me a plus five, plus five. Uh, Crucible of Fire gets me plus three, plus three to all my dragons. So even this little guy ends up being a, a three, four. Volcanic Dragon. Uh, it's a little bit expensive, but it has flying in haste and it's four, four, so why not? Varix Blade Wing. Now, when I kick it, I get a token. So that doesn't really help Lathless that much, but it is a pretty cheap dragon on its own at 2 and red red. Uh, Garrett's Belligerence. Now, why would I choose this one? Um, <laughs> if you put mana into X and kill a creature dealt damage that way, I get to populate, which means that any of these dragon tokens that I've been generating, I can generate another one. And it's a way to do some targeted removal. Uh, Territorial Hellkite, it's a cheap dragon. Uh, Sarkhan's Triumph, I search for a dragon, reveal it, and put it into my hand. So this is a, a way to tutor up a dragon if I want a really specific one, which I do. Um, mana, mana, and now this is an artifact land. That's important for the whole artifact aspect. Um, Backdraft Hellkite lets me cast spells from my graveyard. So here's another one of those. Uh, when a dragon enters the battlefield, it deals X damage, where it's X is the number of dragons I control. Uh, another artifact land. Uh, this gives me plus one to, well, I'm going to choose dragon. So it's going to give me plus one, plus one to all my dragons. And I can spend mana to pull cards out of my deck. So there's a lot of extra card draw in here to try and get through my deck. Um, Here's a really big dragon. If an opponent was dealt damage this turn, it enters the battlefield with six plus one plus one counters on it. So it'd be a 12-12. This is definitely one of the ones I bought 10 years ago. Uh, so a 12-12 dragon, and then I also get a 5-5. Five five. Uh, whenever this one attacks, uh, Dracuseth, Maw of Flames, it deals uh, four damage and three damage up to three targets, essentially. And it's a 7-7, seven, seven. so this is a really big dragon. Dragon Egg, again, it's a really cheap dragon, but it also generates a token. Um, let's see. There's another enters the battlefield with power 5 or greater, so the tokens that Lathless is making. Steel Hellkite. This is an artifact dragon, which helps with the artifact portion of it. And uh, Free Jam Regent is improvised, so... Uh, artifacts, I can tap them to help pay for the spell. So that makes this end up being a free, well, not a free, a cheap dragon that I can use with Lathless that I can pay for with my artifacts. Flame Blast Dragon lets me ping for X and a red. So whenever it attacks, I can do some targeted removal. Uh, Hoarding Dragon, search my library for an artifact card. And when it dies, I can put the exiled card into my hand. So that is a way to get a artifact for use later. Uh, this just removes blockers. So here's again with that whole artifact theme, flying haste, and I can get plus X plus zero, where X is the number of artifacts I control. So if I have five artifacts, two mana to get plus five is huge. Card draw. Now this one, <clears throat> This one is interesting. So I choose a creature type of dragon, and for one mana, it becomes a copy of a target creature. So if I copy something like Scourge of Valkus, it's not actively entering the battlefield because it's already in the battlefield, but now when I cast another dragon, I'm getting two triggers. Now I can't copy Lathless because of the legend rule, 
Uh, but this allows me to copy all some of these big dragons that have other triggered abilities for one mana whenever I need it. Or I can just add an extra dragon into the count to be able to use for some of these other abilities. Soul Ring, of course. Uh, mimic Vat lets me take non-token creature, exile it to Mimic Vat, um, and I can create a token that's a copy of the card exiled with Mimic Vat. That's, again, it's creating another dragon that I'm able to trigger these Enter the Battlefield abilities with. Um, yeah, this goes over here. Uh, Rapacious Dragon. Now, this is a pretty generic dragon, but when it enters the battlefield, I create two treasure tokens. So that helps ramp me as well as gives me more artifacts. Balefire Dragon is just a nasty dragon on its own. Um, when it deals combat damage to a player, it deals that much damage to each creature that player controls. So it has flying, so if it gets through and does 6 damage, I'm doing 6 damage to each creature that player controls. So this is just a really powerful dragon. And what's really fun is if we do some of these uh, dragon fire, like plus 1 to each creature, Moonveil Dragon next to it, or uh, Lathless, then I can pump this up to 7, 8, 9, 10 and do 10 damage to all their creatures. So this is kind of one of those, like, almost game-ending kind of pieces to wipe their board. Uh, Moonveil Dragon is, uh, it's a little bit expensive because it's 6 for a 5-5, five, five, but I can spend 1 red mana to give each creature I control plus 1 plus 0. And you'll notice uh, Lathless is 1 and a red to give plus 1 plus 0. So it's cheaper and it's giving it to all of my creatures. So this is, again, another just powerful dragon. This is an artifact dragon, and I can pay life to give plus one plus zero, so I can just throw a bunch of extra life at this if I need to, and it just gets ridiculously powerful, but it's an artifact. Slumbering dragon uh, is, a, is a dragon that just gets more powerful whenever I get attacked. When a creature attacks me or a planeswalker I control, put a plus one plus one counter on slumbering dragon. Yeah, it can't do anything until it has five or more. If it has five or more, it's an eight eight. For one mana. And it still has this ability when it wakens. So as I'm getting attacked, it's still getting stronger and stronger, and it's a cheap dragon to go with Lathless. Uh, Rhyme Scale Dragon. Um, this one's, again, a little bit expensive, but I have some ice or snow mountains in here, and I can just pay that a couple of times and tap target creatures, and creatures with ice counters on them don't untap during their un controller's untap steps. So if there's flyers or creatures with reach, I can just hit them with the Rhyme Scale Dragon ability and they can't block anymore. Here it is. This is the one, this is one of the ones I pulled back in the day and one of my favorite cards, Utvara Hellkite. Six red red is very expensive, but whenever a dragon you control attacks, not enters the battlefield, attacks, and it doesn't say non-token, it just says dragon. Put a 6-6 red dragon creature token onto the, with flying onto the battlefield. So if I have five dragons attacking, even if they're little tiny ones, or even like a fake one, like the, the Mirror of the Forebears, if it, it's a fake little dragon, well, now I just got a bunch of 6-6 six, six dragons onto the battlefield. Yeah, so I do that, and then I use Hellkite Charger, which is one of the ones I got a while back. Whenever Hellkite Charger attacks, I may pay 5 red red, which is a lot. If I do, untap all attacking creatures, and after this phase, there's an additional combat phase. So this, plus all of those dragons that I just got, get to attack. And so then I'm doubling them again. Now, we need haste, don't we? Well, that's where... It's in here. I promise it's in here. Fervor. Creatures you control have haste. Uh, so that's a great way to get all those tokens to be able to attack immediately. So then I've just quadrupled the number of dragons that I have. Here's the key piece for the artifact portion of the deck. Flying and trample. Whenever Hellkite Tyrant deals combat damage to a player, gain control of artifact all artifacts that player controls. So flying and trample means they have to have enough to block all six damage, unless I'm like buffing it with some of these. So then it's seven, eight, nine, 
and I steal all their artifacts. And it's the beginning of my upkeep, so I have to go all the way around the table. But if I control 20 or more artifacts, I win the game. And with Trample, if somebody attacks me and I block with this dragon and I hit him back, well, then I get all their artifacts. So it could be like they're attacking me before the end of their turn and I steal all their artifacts and I have like 23 and they can't get rid of all my artifacts. So this card will be really fun and that's why I have so many of these artifact cards in, in here. And then this is all just lands. So this is, you can see I have quite a few snow, but I don't have all snow. It's mostly just regular mountains. Um, and then we'll go through some of these that I skipped. Soul Ring, everybody knows what that is. So there's card draw. There's a lot of card draw because yeah, I need help. And then just like some, some buffs, being able to protect my commander. Uh, card draw, here's another creature, power five or greater enters the battlefield. Deals X damage to each creature without flying and each player. So it's going to hit me, but... No, my creatures are going to get hit because just about all of them have flying. Um, target creature can't be blocked this turn. There's so many creatures that base on combat damage. Card draw, card draw. Uh, this is just a way to buff all of my creatures, my dragons, and then reveal extra dragons. Uh, so this is an artifact. This is an artifact as well as the fact it's just mana ramp. Um, flying gains haste until end of turn. So again, this goes with the, the dragon tokens. They all have flying, and they'll get haste when they enter until end of turn. And whenever dragons enter the battlefield, it does X damage, which X is the number of dragons I control. So if I generate five dragons, this is enough to, like, wipe out a player. Uh, another artifact land... Add one mana of any color, spend it only to cast the creature of the chosen type. Well, it's a two for mana ramp. Uh, this is a little bit more expensive mana ramp, but it's an indestructible artifact, so that's kind of nice. Uh, Tutor a Dragon, we went over that one, went over that one. Uh, Hexproof and Haste, great way to protect a key dragon. Uh, deals damage equal to its power to any target. Again, we're going to be making a lot of dragons. Uh, X damaged each creature without flying and each planeswalker. Well, I only have one planeswalker. I can turn him into a dragon. So, you know, there's that. Um, card draw. Whenever I discard a card, XL that card from your graveyard. Draw a card, then discard a card. And I can sacrifice it to get all those exiled cards back into my hand. Um, scry one. Kind of nice but adding mana of any color, it's an artifact. Card draw, uh, choose a color, plus one, plus zero, and add one mana of the chosen color. So it's ramp and just a little bit of buff. Um, haste, red creature spells cast, or cost one less. With all of these really big dragons, I need as much of that as I can get. Uh, and I will probably eventually get the ones that reduce cost of dragons. They're just really weak and, I, and not flying, so I may kill them in the crossfire accidentally. Um, whenever I cast a creature spell, I can discard and draw, which is huge, having card draw like that. Uh, draw a card if I have a power four or greater. Well, just about everything is. Um, and then more card draw. This is a nice mana ramp. Uh, it goes really well with the next card. Um, I just dump mana into this, and then I now have this ability to add a ton of mana to my mana pool. So if I had two, four, six, eight mana, I can get four mana out of that artifact. And then uh, plus one, plus one counters. I don't have a lot in here that does that, but I do have a few. And I can pay one to generate a few servos, just extra artifacts for up here, and just some bodies to consume or you know block or whatever. Um, this is the, the cool ability. Choose a counter on target permanent or player. Give that permanent or player another counter of that kind. So that can be helpful to help kind of buff up either like my uh, Everflowing Chalice or buff up some of my creatures with plus one, plus ones. Uh, I don't know. We'll see. Cheap artifact too. Um, so that's me store up mana to spend on dragons. So if I have extra mana, I can just dump it into here and pump this up and eventually just spend it all to get some dragons. So it's kind of a land ramp kind of deal. 
Um, Dragon's Heart is card draw, and when a dragon enters the battlefield, I could get a lot of dragon gold counters on there. And then more card draw. Um, enters the battlefield or attacks, put a page counter on Tome of Legends. Well, I'm going to run out of uh, counters, so if we put that animation module back with it, I can, I can generate an extra page counter or two if I have to. So anyway, that's the idea behind my deck. You can see it's about, I don't know, a fifth is all the artifacty kind of stuff. Uh, a fifth is about the big creatures, dragons entering the battlefield. A fifth card draw. And uh, then we have just all these just big beefy dragons on their own. Uh, I mean, any one of these can do quite a bit of damage on its own. So, um, yeah, just about all of these are ridiculous on their own. Uh, yeah, there's another token. So, um, yeah, I think this will be a pretty fun deck. I will get to try it out for the first time tomorrow and find out how wrong I really am. And also notice that I put my commander in a different sleeve so I can actually find it. I don't know if that's legal or not, but we'll find out.